something very weird happened last night when I got home from work. If you've read the community notes, I said that my laptop was experiencing some technical difficulties. It wasn't turning on for like a full day. I got home from work after several hours of not using it, to be honest, and then it just turned on somehow. The screen keeps cutting in and out, so we're not totally out of the woods yet, but at least we have a laptop that's now turning on. So I can probably now start editing videos a little bit more without some of the major frustrations. But anyway, it's been a good weekend. West Ham's got its first three points under Hula and Lopetegui. Great second half performance and so much to smile about. So uh, if I can actually edit this, we'll roll the starting credits right now. <laughs> It finished West Ham United, well actually no it didn't, it finished Crystal Palace nil, West Ham United 2 at Selhurst Park down in Croydon. Uh, Louis Lopetegui gets his first win as West Ham head coach uh, after a very good second half performance which saw West Ham score two goals in five minutes. Um, one thing that really did get me about this game was that Lopetegui was really good with his in-game management. He was able to make better decisions and choices, both tactically and in terms of the subs. These decisions that he made helped us to get the win, ultimately. And that's why I was really, really pleased. I think that um, we deserved really all those three points at the end of the day. I think that we played with a lot of energy in the second half. We certainly looked a lot more dynamic as a team. And um, yeah, really good performance at the end of the day. So I'm really impressed with what I saw. In terms of the team lineup, it was unchanged from the game against Manchester City. Edson Alvarez, sorry, against Aston Villa, rather. We've got Man City next week. Well, I'm not thinking straight. <laughs> Aston Villa. Was unchanged from that game. Uh, Edson Alvarez made the bench. I think he's not 100% fit, but he's about 90% of the way there. Um, Somerville, Aaron Wan-Bissaka and the regulars were benched. Which I thought was a bit surprising to begin with. But then again, it was a manager's decision. It was going to be a big risk. Regardless. Um... First half really was all palaces, to be honest with you. Palace were the ones who were causing issues most of the time. I mean, Adam Wharton was good at breaking up plays and passing the ball around. We didn't really cope well with him. Um, a few counters which came to nothing. Mamakudas made an insane dribble in that first half. Like, holy frick, that guy is mad on the ball, carrying it. Um, Max Kilman, I thought, was absolutely outstanding again. And there were people who were saying he was a flop. Shut your mouths, seriously. You're stupid if you're saying that right now because he's making you look dumb. Um, Mavropanos actually had a pretty good first half and then a good second half too. As they hit the crossbar with an effort from outside the box and that looked destined to go into the goal. Physics denied it from going in, obviously. Um... We didn't really have any shots at goal in the first half, which was worrying. I thought we'd go at Palace a bit more because they've lost quite a few players, but we didn't go as much as I wanted to. Um, people were saying to take off Socek and Sofal again. We didn't. But then again, we had to trust what Hulan was doing. And... Uh, yeah, it wasn't for us to really say what to do. I would have personally put Kapakata maybe at centre mid, Kudas at 10, Somerville on, take Socek off, something along those lines. Maybe put Bowen up top. I don't know. Not my decision at the end of the day. In the second half, um, he bought Aaron Wambasaka on. And um, this is part of the game management. He knew that so far was struggling, so he needed to get a right back who could run with the ball a little bit more. Aaron Wan-Bissaka could do that. And Aaron, I don't run with the ball, Wan-Bissaka actually ran with the ball, got past the Palace player and started a little bit of a counter. Um, ball worked its way into the box. It ricocheted off a couple of players. I think Fulkrug was the last player to try and touch it. 
But in the commotion, Thomas Socek smashed the ball with his left foot in the box, into the net, 1-0 West Ham. And deadlock was broken. That was the goal that we'd been crying out for. Not from the source, maybe, we wanted, but hey, don't hate Socek, man. He's a good guy. In the celebration, actually, the fans rushed to the front and uh, knocked down the, like, advertising board on the side, the strip board thing, and it crushed a little ball boy. Bowen and Socek checked that he was okay, and actually Bowen gave his shirt to the boy at the end of the game. He was fine, but he could have, like, been crushed under that. He was quite upset, a little kid, but, you know, passion. They didn't mean to do it, mate. Just saying. Just the passion. 67 minutes gone, it's 1-0 West Ham. So, what do you do now? You look for a second goal. You don't just sit back. It's not David Moyes here anymore. It's the J-Lo ball era, and we don't sit back right now. We knew we had to get a second goal, and freaking hell, this was good. Kilman carries the ball, yeah? Diagonal pass over to Bowen. Bowen... Runs at the Palace defenders, gets into the box and fires it into the right corner of the goal. 2-0, it's his first goal as captain of West Ham United. Phil Krug actually looked good, by the way, when he came on. He, I think he won like five duels in the game. He ran at the keeper and ne nearly scored, but his effort went wide of the target. Uh, Aaron Cresswell came on for his 350th appearance in a West Ham shirt. Um, Tadebo came on as well. A good option to have, too. And Tadebo, by the way, completed 100% of his passes for the second game in the road, even though he was a sub. Max Kilman had a 100% pass completion rate. And I believe he won four out of seven tackles. Guido Rodriguez and Edson Alvarez got to partner up together again because Alvarez came on into this game. Rodriguez goes a little bit under the radar, but I think we need to understand that his contribution is really, really important to the team because he is the one who is helping to maintain the passing level. He played well. Like, really well. And you know what? He impressed me a lot in this game. The subs really did help us out. I was happy with what I saw, to be honest with you. And, well, finished 2-0. Good to get that first win. Palace fans are like getting extremely pissed off with Dougie Friedman and Oliver Glashner. They're starting to ask, where are the new signings? Stop shipping off more than we're buying in. That's what West Ham used to do. We did that and we don't really do it anymore because we understand the importance of squad depth. Palace are about to lose Gahi, who was captaining this game, by the way. And probably another player as well. Mateta apparently is a bit unsettled and wants to leave. It's worrying times for them. I thought the European charge was going to happen, though, for Palace fans. Where's the European charge now? Well, it might happen in May, but where is it now? It's not there. It's non-existent. Sochek played really well, to be honest, at the end of the day. Everyone played a pretty good game, and now we got to play for Manchester City. Up next, then we got the international break, so we got time to rest up. As for this video... I'm going to see if I'm able to edit this like normal. And if I'm not, I'm going to say thank you for watching and goodbye for now. Let's see if I can edit this.